rainstorm came through at 60 to 70 miles an hour winds. I had to cut down sunflowers that were in the planters because they were shaking the planters bad. take them down and our cold use all hidden here behind the fire pit table ready to start a remodel or redo on our deck um, dragon is back there and I'm gonna flip the camera around just so you can see kind of what we have planned to go on here but we've had a lot of crazy rain and a crazy windstorm that came through last week so we had to unfortunately chop down a lot of those beautiful sunflowers that you've seen in our most recent deck tour that was up so we have a little bit of a change going on and I'll give you a little bit more about so as you can see we've had to pull apart all of those gorgeous sunflowers that were up and you can kind of see also too how straggly now the petunias look which would have been fine like we explained in the previous video we would have cut those back again and allowed them a chance to fresh back flush back uh, fresh but now instead of doing all of that because we have to also do some work to secure these planters that dragon will show you are kind of yeah, leaning we didn't really take an account of sunflowers being even though those are dwarf sunflowers they're about three feet tall about this tall some are a little bit taller, but the high winds would yank this uh, planter, so they became a little bit loose. So something to consider next year, probably uh, for planting. We're probably not going to plant plants that are tall. We're probably going to go more to the kind of draping plants that are spilling over, spilling petunias, or some that are less less. Uh, not as tall not as tall right. shorter so what we're going to be doing next is we found these uh redhead and wasabi coleus which we have a couple of them also too already on our deck but these went on sale for a dollar each so we did some calculations just to see how many we wanted and we would need to uh, redo the planters so that's going to be our next project so dragon right now is laying out a tarp and while we actually have some dry weather, at least just gonna go ahead and get started by pulling out what's in the planters so that we don't have to worry about that heavy wet dirt. And you can see when he- so kinda wanna wait for them to dry out so it's easier to pull them on. And they're pretty much rooted in and that's another, another reason why we're taking them out. As you can see they're quite rooted in. So they, deplete the water quite quickly and we let them completely dry here and then pass away. So Dragon will just continue to pull all of those out. You can see how they just are pretty much so dry that they just maintain the shape of the planter that they were in. And last year when we took out the uh, planters to redo them and we took out the sweet potato vine. There were all kinds of uh, little potatoes that it started to grow in on the inside. And that vine is really, really aggressive and it's kind of all over the place. So we typically have to redo it anyways. Look at you can see just how nice and healthy that root system is from all of the sunflowers. This, was, this particular one was just sunflowers and petunias. So everything was nice and healthy that was in there. It's just a matter of learning from this experience from having the tall sunflowers that were in there and the wind and being already being on a second floor deck. So having to, as Dragon mentioned, do something that will be a little more lower as we move along. So we're gonna go ahead and finish working on this and then move into the next phase of the project.
can see the deck is in progress right now. Everything is a complete and total mess as we are putting in emitters for the first time in the planters. So Dragon has been going through drilling holes in the sides of all of the planters, running the drip line along the back side of the railing. So it's kind of hidden under here on this side. So you don't see it from the view when you're sitting here and then coming in to secure them before we put in fresh dirt and then finish off the planters with, of course, coleus now that we bought for a dollar each, that wasabi coleus and redhead coleus. So all the dirt that we took out is here. Earlier today, Dragon built this sifter. So we're sifting through the dirt, getting out all of the big pieces that are in there, as well as some leftover pieces of potato from the potato vine, putting it into the wheelbarrow and then adding to it some manure just to have some really good soil as we're moving forward here. Oh my gosh, we have water. Dragon just turned it on to try it. We have water. It works, it works, it works. Woohoo. Let's see if I can get in here. I'll cover a little bit. summer deck update is all done, all the planters are finished. Uh, we took the opportunity since we were changing the plants and dirt to do something that we wanted to do for quite a while now is to add a watering system emitters. So uh, it was fairly easy. I didn't want to do how-to video. This was my first time doing the emitters irrigation system. Uh, but it is uh, definitely well watered. We, this, this year on the deck, we added additional one, two, three, four, five, five planters. This spot here, all the, all the trees. So it became a kind of a hassle every day, especially during the uh, hot, hot days, 90 degree days that we had in just the month of July. Uh, we had uh, over 28, over 90 degrees days, so we, had to water pretty much every day planter some days even twice they're black so they kind of water evaporates out of them fairly quickly um, plants were also big we had petunias and sunflowers sunflowers were quite tall so they were kind of drawing a lot of water and they were drying off quickly so we installed the installed the um, irrigation biggest investment with that is the timer which costs you we have a four split timer so you can have four different zones with them uh, that's the biggest investment that's about 55 dollars that's the initial cost on that other than that tubing is fairly cheap they between and all the little components but i would say this project i think probably 150 bucks maybe even less uh, but it's well worth it it's not for just one season you can use it for all the other seasons for upcoming seasons so we'll be all set for upcoming seasons uh, one thing that i did do and i've learned through watching some uh, youtube videos of this is connecting everything in a continuous loop so it kind of helps the plants uh, water quicker so water hose is kind of dropping if you can show them coming down the 
down the gutter. We have a water, fa water faucet down below the deck. So water comes up on one side and there's another connection down on this side and that's what I was trying to say about the loop. So water kind of comes up on the both ends. Kevin, you already showed them the old inside, what it looked like, right? Where? Inside the planters? No. Oh, these. So we have half inch tubing uh, bringing us water up and then distribution is done with um, quarter inch irrigation tubing. So each, uh, there's a emitter, if you, if you can see it, there's a little hole, let me pull this out. So there is a emitter, you see this little hole here, there's an emitter every six inches that drops uh, one gallon per hour if you leave it. So I have five holes on this maple tree here in an hour that will be uh, that will drop five gallons of water if I leave it on for an hour. The beauty of have, having the holes so close together is that we basically leave it for on for five to seven minutes and all the planters are completely completely uh, soaked. And this usually tasks watering them manually. It took us about probably 20, maybe 30 minutes each day. So just right there, just doing that in the middle of the heat, it's kind of really, really helpful. Um, so that, that's about it. Uh, I'm really, really looking forward to see how plants are gonna perform with having consistent water every day. Uh, I have a schedule for 7 a.m. One thing that I keep in mind with the uh, tubing, it's black tubing, it gets extremely, extremely hot if it's exposed to the sun. So you do wanna avoid turning the water on after the uh, hot day. So probably in the morning, I think it's the best, best time to water it with. So water, it comes out nice and then cold, cold. So like I said, I'm looking forward to see how plants are gonna perform. Uh, this is kind of a temporary setup with these plants. These are gonna probably be here till late September, maybe f early October. So we have about two, two and a half months of these to enjoy. And then we're gonna move on to our uh, fall planting, fall and winter setup. Anything I'm forgetting, Kevin? Uh, so for those of you that uh, don't know about our, our channel, look us up on uh, Gardening Gaze on Instagram, Gardening Gaze on Facebook. And always, if you like this kind of uh, videos, please uh, like us and subscribe to our channel. Click that uh, bell so you can get a notification for any future videos of ours. Thank you.